Thank you. Thank you, Anton. And yeah, that's it with the announcements for today. And now I'm very, very happy to hand over the microphone to Larry Wall and his presentation. Welcome to California. <laughs> and welcome my uh, newest grandson to the world. <clears throat> Does this work? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, by the way, this, this, this is a picture of Sid's uh, mother uh, here, uh, self-portrait. That's Geneva. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, cultural differences. Now, it, it's, it's a little strange for someone from California to be talking to all of you about cultural differences. Uh, I think you probably understand more about cultural differences than we do. But uh, uh, actually, uh, you know, my, my ancestry came from Ukraine, uh, among other things, and Belgium, and Poland, and Canada, and so, uh, yeah, I have I'm, I'm a little bit of uh, cultural differences my own self, so. Uh, this last weekend, we... Uh, we have about 20 of us met in the town of Pearl, Germany, for the Pearl Reunification Summit. Um, now, that, that's kind of a funny name. Uh, you know, that's like saying the English Reunification Summit. Uh, you know, I, I did notice some cultural differences there, though. Um, you know, Niecha is how the uh, California would say this or most Americans, ni e cha, like that. Uh, but it, it, the, the, uh, the Poles know, you know, it, it know that's a two-syllable word, ni cha, okay. Um, even even the, the, the town of Pearl itself, they, they don't know how to pronounce their own name because they, they pronounced it Peril. Uh, <laughs> and, and we were very uh, worried coming, you know, coming together uh, to talk about uh, Pearl 5 and Pearl 6 and, uh, you know, whether, whether there can be some cross-cultural communication there. Uh, so, but, you know, uh, so we were worried that it would be, everyone worried about the perils of the other uh, group, but it, it turned out not to be the case. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, that's kind of like saying, you know, uh, in, are we going to merge uh, Pearl 5 and Pearl 6? No, that's like merging you know, uh, British English with uh, American English. Uh, but, which isn't going to happen, and, and, and uh, I, I, some of you actually are, are, are uh, up to English 7. Uh, uh, right you are, might. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I, I don't know that much about that version of English, so I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, in fact, um, you know, th there's a problem with saying Pearl 5 versus Pearl 6 because what we discovered, you know, it's like, it's like saying, you know, the English speakers speak a different language. Well, yeah, kind of, sort of, but, you know, they actually get along pretty well. So we uh, basically, um, we decided at the summit that, uh, that uh, you know, we can get along really well and talk to each other and uh, find ways of, of uh, making Pearl 5 and Pearl 6 interact better uh, so we can run both at the same time, and uh, everyone can be happy. Uh, but, you know, it's like uh, we, we uh, are no longer having to uh, fight the Revolutionary War or whatever you guys call it. Uh, let me turn this off. Um, what do you call it? The U.S. Defense. The U.S. Yeah, uh, and we no longer have to fight the War of 1812. What do you guys call that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Uh, uh, this is 30 years war or something, I don't know. Um, anyway, um, but uh, so uh, we're, we ended up doing some comparative linguistics here uh, and uh, discovered that, that uh, we all still like Perl 5 and we all kind of like Perl 6 too. Um, I've been doing some um, uh, comparative linguistics my own self uh, over the last couple of years. I've had a, a lot of fun. There's a site out there called uh, Rosetta Code, uh, which uh, has examples from many, many different languages, uh, including Perl 5 and Perl 6. So uh, I've been uh, uh, translating some of them as uh, someone who happens to be fluent in both Perl 5 and Perl 6. Uh, and I, I go back and forth between those communities. So uh, I, I thought that I would give you a, a, an example of, of just some of the cultural differences, uh, at, but the ways in which they are, are uh, similar, too. Uh, so there, here is a, uh, a program which uh, uh, I found on Rosetta Code. This is a Perl 5 program. It, uh, does a, um, what's called a strand sort. Strand sort uh, works by taking a list of, of uh, numbers and you just go through and pick out strands of uh, monotonically increasing, well, they don't have to be monotonic. Uh, they have to be uh, increasing or the same, uh, strands of numbers. And then when you pull out a strand, you merge it in with what you have sorted and you just keep doing that until everything is, is pulled out and sorted. So uh, it's, it's a kind of a fun, uh, little thing here. Now I need to just set up here like this and teach my computer how to type very fast. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do here since that's kind of wrapping kind of wrapping around there is I'm going to reduce the indent. I can type very fast one-handed. <laughs> so that reduces the indent and you kind of see the whole program here. Uh, we call the strand sort here at the bottom, uh, you see here, and it calls this. This repeatedly calls the strand routine to pull out strands. And uh, OK, now just to prove this actually works, let's, let's run it. OK, you see, before we have a random set of numbers, and after running with Perl 5 here, it produces the, the numbers in sorted order. Cool. <coughs> Um, so now when we go, when we call strand, strand in turn um, does some things and then, then we call merge whenever we pull out a strand. So that's the whole program. Now the first thing we uh, uh, notice here is that if we're going to, you know, translate this, uh, you know, when you're translating a, a document across uh, languages, if the, if the document says this is a, a German document and you're translating it to English, then it's, it's kind of a, uh, you don't know whether to translate to this is an English document or this is a German document. Well, anyway, so it's not going to be in Perl <laughs> 5. So let's take that out for now. Um, and you, you can, uh, we can, we can put in a use v6 there if you want to, but it, it, it's optional if you're feeding it directly to Perl 6, just as v5 is optional if you hand it to v5. So, so what are some of the, the, the surface level differences? Well, um, first of all, if we, if we come down here, we see we have uh, parameters coming into the subroutine and we're assigning them. And this is how we've uh, always done it, uh, except uh, you know, now, now in Perl 6, we can steal that and move it up to here and have a real signature and, and delete that line. And, uh, and it works just the same as that, that line. But it's a little more normal, I guess you might say. And it's actually upward compatible with the, uh, the, uh, the prototypes, but prototypes don't actually do, the, do the, the assignment for you. This actually does uh, bind the uh, parameters for you. Well, what else can we do here? Let's, let's go down to this one. Now here we have the, the, a different idiom, which is to shift the parameter, but there's still only one parameter there. So we can steal that, move it up here, and put it in parens. OK, and delete that line. Well, here, here, here's yet uh, 
an even different one. This one uh, assigns from at underscore, which you know is, is a very adic list of arguments. So uh, that ends up looking like this. And, uh, take that out and add the add x there. Now you notice we have a star in front of it, and that says it's a variadic thing. You can have as many arguments as you want there, and it'll put it into uh, the X array. And uh, you notice that the variadic version is the specially marked one. This is the opposite default from what you get in um, uh, Perl 5 in a, in a prototype, where you have to backslash the, the scalar uh, parameters and don't backslash the, the, the slurpy one at the end. Well, we saw that, that that's kind of the wrong default in Perl 6, so we put it the other way around. You only have to mark the, the, final, um, uh, the final parameter. Okay, we can get rid of that. And uh, it just works out better that way. That's a lot, of, a lot of the cultural differences here are just tweaking the defaults a little bit. Um, but it's the same idea of what's happening underneath. Uh, okay. Now let's see, what can we do next here? Oh, well since we're passing in these things as scalar arguments now, uh, they're automatically scalar. Uh, pretty much everything in, a, uh, in Perl 6 is a reference already, so we don't actually have to talk about references, it's just sort of implicit. So we can take off these backslashes, we can just pass the arrays and it passes them automatically as references. And it will, it will do the right thing. It will bind the one array to x and the other way to, 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 to dollar y. But since, since uh, you can use an array as if it were a reference, we can actually just go and change these to, say, pass in an array uh, and another array. And in that case, we don't need to have the dereferencing syntax all over the place, which says at dollar. That's a, a, a little extra characters we don't need. So let's just change that to add x to go with the signature and change that one. This one, this one, uh, there's one, there's another one, uh, another one, and another one. And let's see, I guess there's some down here too, uh, which are handy search, but we better change the parameter as well. And there's one, there's one, whoops. Uh, yeah, okay. There's one. Okay. And yeah. Hmm. A little bit. Okay. Didn't find it. Okay. Good. Uh. Twenty. Yeah, yeah, the DREF. We'll get to that. Um, okay, but uh, okay. Now let, let's let's another another small cultural difference here is it turns out if you have the um, the um, um, braces uh, that are mandatory, like Perl always has had the curlies, then it, then it turns out you don't actually have to have the uh, the, the parentheses there. So unlike in C, we can actually just get rid of these, get rid of some of the clutter. And uh, this also has the advantage that if you hit a percent in VI, it automatically goes to the other end of the block. It doesn't find the other end of the conditional, which is more useful. Uh, OK, now, so we can get rid of these two, type fast. And this one. Uh, in, in Perl 6, if you do that, if you put the parentheses right after word like that, it thinks it's a function call. So uh, we want to get rid of those, and we don't need that, and we don't need the extra space. We can line it all up pretty. Okay, and we can turn on syntax highlighting. We'll call it Perl 6, even though it's not entirely yet. Um, so, okay. Uh, now, let's uh, actually try uh, running this with Perl 6 and see what happens. 
I'm happening to, happening to use the uh, Niecha implementation, but uh, uh, this also will uh, run under uh, Rakuto. Uh, Niecha, excuse me. How do you pronounce it? Uh, <laughs> you pronounce it like a cat. They, they aren't going to agree. Never mind. OK. Uh, so you see here, this dereference syntax, as uh, was pointed out, is the incorrect one. So let's uh, fix that. Uh, now, in Perl 6, the dereference syntax is dot instead of arrow, like most other languages. Um, so we, we stole the arrow for something else, and uh, you can use dot. But the fact is, on a subscript, the dot is optional. It's always a reference and a dereference anyway, so we can just leave it out. Same with this one. We can make it a dot or leave it out. And there's another problem there, which we'll get to. <laughs> leave that one out. OK. Now, let's try it again. Yeah, the sigil is wrong, but you don't see that yet. OK. Oh, now it says, OK, uh, we're using a minus one subscript. Now, Perl 5 has this magic thing that says if you use a negative subscript, it suddenly starts counting from the other end of the array. But what happens if you have a, an array variable with a position in it and it accidentally goes negative? Suddenly, you have this discontinuity where you're in the wrong end of the array and you don't, don't catch it. So in order to get rid of that, uh, that uh, er error-prone construct, uh, we have a, a way of uh, writing that which says, uh, if you have a subscript that says whatever minus one, we read the star as whatever. Then it says count from whatever. And in this case, whatever knows that it's supposed to be the uh, size of the array. So it ends up getting the thing, and it's unambiguous. Same thing here. Uh, this one. OK. Now, if we try it this time, we will notice that, in fact, the sigil is wrong. We have all these uh, uh, things that says variable dollar $x is not pretty clear. Did you mean at? Um, it, you know, it, so yeah, uh, as was pointed out, the sigil is wrong. In Perl 6, we keep the sigils the same, which seems to be a little bit cleaner. Uh, OK, change that one. And let's see, there's one, there's one here, and there. OK, now I think that does that. Um, what should we do now? Yeah, let's take out more parens. Don't need those parens. And there's some friends down here, too, we don't need. OK, let's try it again. Oh, yeah. Uh, in, in, uh, in, in Perl 6, we uh, outlawed the, the rand of n notation because we have other ways of writing that. And it's not very useful. And it's kind of error prone because of being a, uh, nobody's sure whether it's a, uh, uh, a uh, unary operator or not. So uh, it, it turns out, as it, as it recommends in the error message, you can, in fact, write it like this instead, if you like. But that's not really idiomatic. Uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it'll be understood, but they'll, they'll think you're a, a, uh, you know, from a different part of, the, uh, of Perl land if you do that. In, um, OK, uh, it, we would tend to write something more like this. What this how, how to read this is, you have a hundred-sided dice. <laughs> Die, douse. No, no, it's got to be douse. Uh, you know. <laughs> Mice, mouse. Lice, louse. Dice, douse. One, one douse. But it's hundred-sided. And we roll it 10 times. Uh, you could also say dot pick, but that's more like picking marbles out of a bag. Um, uh, and then you would got, not get repeats. So you can get repeats with roll. OK, so anyway, we'd write that. Um, let's try that. Get rid of that error message. Now, it's very unhappy. 
<laughs> and uh, it, the principle of reading error messages on these things, you look down the uh, listing, kind of ignore the core setting here, and find the first thing that's actually in the strand program is at about line four. Um, hmm. Don't know what's going on with that, so we will continue. Uh, uh, but let, let, let's, uh, let's you know, kind of divide and conquer. That's one approach to debugging here. So let's put in an exit statement before we actually uh, uh, call, call this uh, strand sort here. Uh, and try it that way. And okay, we know it's we know it's after that print statement, but um, you know it's not actually printing anything useful there. It's just printing the name of the array. In Perl six, you can't if you put a mail address into your string, it doesn't interpolate the uh, the, the the Google before the you know it doesn't interpolate at Google. Um, so in Perl 6, you have to um, I think this is going to yeah, you have to um, subscript it somehow. So let's do that there and there. And now if we run it, we actually get the uh, generated numbers. We haven't sorted it yet. We haven't figured out what's wrong with that yet, but that's okay. Uh, you see that it's not, in fact, in order. That's good. Uh, there's about a one in, I don't know how many, in order. Okay. So, uh, Okay, so what, what could be wrong? Well, you know, let, let's, uh, let's, let's look at some things. Um, actually, look at the algorithm here. Take the exit out. Um, we notice that the, if we actually think about the algorithm, uh, we're calling the strand routine with at, at x here, but it's actually modifying uh, that array. And Perl 6 is a little bit pickier about its parameters. By default, parameters in Perl 6 are read only. And that gives the optimizer uh, a chance to, to optimize them. But if you're actually um, change, uh, changing it, then it ought to be declared uh, one of two ways. If we're just uh, wanting our own copy of it that we're going to modify, as, as it seems to be in this case, um, then uh, what we really need to say here is, Okay, we don't actually need the, the star there because we're only passing in a single array is the first thing. And the second thing is we can make it is copy. Uh, and that says just make a copy of the array and then we can modify it and our parent doesn't have to worry about whether it was modified or not. The other situation, we're actually passing in an array that we want to be modified and passed back. We want to pass it by reference. So in this routine up here, we actually want to say it's, it's a read write, write parameter. Now maybe that's the problem. I don't think it actually is, but it's just something I happen to notice in passing. Another problem here that more likely to be a bug, um, Perl 5 has this class of uh, functions which are actually called named unary operators, and you have to memorize this list of which ones are named unary and which ones aren't. We said we don't want people to memorize arbitrary lists, so uh, we made them all list operators by parsing, but that means occasionally you might have to write that instead to keep it from swallowing up the rest of the expression. And that seems like a clunky thing to have to do, but in actual fact, we usually uh, don't write it that way. We usually write it as a method because everything is, in fact, an object in Perl 6. And Perl 5 is starting to move this way. It you know, probably stay at being an arrow in, in, instead of a dot, but you're likely in future versions of Perl 5 to see arrays and, uh, and hashes acting more like real objects that you can call methods on. Uh, and that's, that's one of the things, you know, cultures borrow back and forth from each other. And uh, that, that's something that, that is happening between Perl 5 and Perl 6. So in that case, you don't actually need the parentheses. Well, let's try this again. OK. Now, we notice that, in actual fact, it sorted it correctly. Cool. But it has some errors. About line, 
about line 20 here. Uh huh. Well, let's see. Um, line 20. Oh, well, that's actually the, uh, the end bracket here of this for statement up here. Um, that's not terribly useful, but it probably means the error is somewhere in there. Um, now, one thing we can do is, is run it with uh, Rakuto instead. Of, I have Rakuto installed as my system wide rather than the, the current one here. So I, I can try it with that and see if it gets a different idea. Okay, it gets confused at about line 17, as you see here. Okay, uh, so 17 is a few lines above that. That's about there. Okay. Uh, well, something's going wrong with all that subscripting. And, you know, that's kind of weird, a weird loop going over negative numbers there. And we already know that Perl 6 is a little flaky. I mean, uh, advanced <laughs> on, on um, uh, negative uh, subscripts and things. So maybe something to do with that. Oh, well, here. I mean, we're actually passing in a negative number as the subscript. That can't work. Uh, it's it's uh, probably going to blow up or... or and, and, it ought to catch that error, but apparently it is not. So we can, we can do this whatever. You want to do the whatever minus the number, but the number is already minus, so you have to do whatever plus the number, and then it subtracts it. So we can do that there, and we can do it over here. Now, if we do that, et voila, it works, and doesn't get, get an error. So that, that's in Nietzsche. Um, uh, I, don't believe that we fixed the other error yet. Uh, I can try it. No. Nope. Uh, that's a, that's a yeah, different problem, uh, which we will fix. OK, so um, now, so let, let's, let's kind of you know, clean, that, clean that up a little bit. Um, you know, I, I don't really don't like these negative indexes, and when you look at it, it's actually just counting from the beginning of the array, left to right. So, um, you know, let, let's try making these positive indexes. The, the reader may thank us later. So, uh, we can say, let's make the indexes zero up to uh, the size of uh, x, but exclude, that's what the uh, little hat there is, the caret, exclude the endpoint. So, that is zero up to at x minus 1, essentially. Now, in that case, we can get rid of these because then the number should be positive. OK, what else? Well, OK. Um, this actually occurs so frequently in Perl 6 that we have a, a prefix operator that means the same thing. So that just means all the uh, indexes of uh, array x. 0 to 1 minus the, one, one less than the, uh, the number there. OK, uh, and just for the fun of it, let's, let's actually name this parameter. Just make it look more mathematical or something. OK, what can we uh, do now? Uh, right. OK. Let's try this again. Now we get more errors again. Oh, no, we're going backwards. Um, what could possibly have gone wrong? Well, if uh, yeah, that's in the wrong place. Okay. Next is going to. What we actually want to do here, uh, the problem you see is that. Um, is that um, we're splicing out an array, but then we're we're not changing the indexes, so we're going to the next index and skipping elements, so. Uh, this is going to do something. So, yes. Oops. 
Okay, let's off by one here, but that's what it's supposed to do. Okay. Now, if we need to inc increment the, uh, uh, we need to increment that i if if we don't splice it, but we don't need to increment the i if we do splice it because it is going to remove that element and everything's going to move down. So we we actually are shortening the array at that point. So that's to compensate for, it's it arguable whether that's cleaner than doing the negative subscripting. I, I, I think so, but let's, let's try that. Okay, that cleans it up again. Now, uh, what else can we do here? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm starting to, to notice, you know, the, in literary criticism, you know, in, in writing, they tell you look for, you know, failure of parallelism, you know, in your sentences. And the same thing is true here. We didn't, we didn't have this uh, semicolon on the end here, but in the other thing we do. And I, I just, that just popped out at me. And then I start looking around, I see there's other places where we're inconsistent. Um, if, we, if we go up to the, the, the top here, we look. OK, these guys are OK. Uh, if you're putting a statement inside a block, but it's all on one line, it's fine to leave off the, uh, the uh, semicolon. It's when, it's when you have a block that has, or a statement that's um, on a line by itself that you're likely to add another line after it and get a weird error unless you have the semicolon. So I, I, I like to uh, add, a, if, I, if I break a one-liner out into a multi-line block, that's when I add a semicolon. But let, let's go ahead and add that. Uh, there's another one. There's some more down here. Uh, oops, that's not the right one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Back in sync here. And notice also that we, we uh, our, our um, uh, sometimes using return and sometimes not. Eh, either way is fine. Uh, but uh, I, I tend to uh, prefer without if I'm just returning values from the end. Okay, what next? Okay, now. Uh, Now, we notice that this is working on um, numbers. But you know, uh, you'd like it to work on other things besides just numbers. Um, so let's, um, let's add uh, another test case here. And instead of uh, using a set of numbers, let's just have a set of words, like that. And what happens if we try to sort that? Well, it complains about all sorts of things and, in fact, does not sort it. So why is that? Well, obviously, um, we've got some, um, that's the first problem. We don't actually need to redeclare at A, but there's, there's a more fundamental problem up here, which is that you notice we've got a uh, numeric comparison. Well, we could change it to a string comparison like this. Uh, and there's another one up here. Which we can change to uh, less than, equal, or greater. <laughs> um, that's actually what it is in Perl 6. I mean, you, 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 would, you would use compare in, uh, in but this, this is the, the string version one. That's because we stole CMP for uh, a different use, which is, in fact, uh, uh, you'll see in a moment. But now if we try to sort this, we see that it, in fact it sorts the strings correctly. And it appears to sort the numbers correctly, but if we um, actually do this enough to get a single digit number, you'll see that it is sorting lexicographically instead of numerically. Oops. Unless that's what you want. So what we need is something generic that works both for string comparison and 
number comparison. And it turns out that's what we stole CMP for. Um, and we need something comparable down here. Now, um, what that turns out to be, we don't, it would be like, uh, we can say we have a before and an after, but we don't have to, we don't have an after same and before same, so we have to negate a, a, uh, an operator. So if it's not after, uh, now that just means the same thing as, as if you'd said this, but we have a meta operator that's a fancy way to write it. Sometimes it's cleaner to write it like this. Of course, this is wrong. It should be, in, in, uh, in fact, before, and we will see that it does not, in fact, sort. That's because this wants to be before. Okay, now we have both, both kinds of sort. Yay. Okay. Um, now, what else can we fix? Well, okay, eek. Up here, there are some magic numbers. Magic numbers are, you know, kind of a code smell. So let's, let's, let's do something about that. Let's uh, change that to decrease. Let's change that to increase. These are built in, you know, you, our languages sometimes have true and false, but we also have decrease, increase, and same. So we can actually use that, and it, uh, it uh, is a little bit more mnemonic, and works the same. OK, what else? Um, OK, uh, this is a little bit of an end weight problem here, and uh, we don't actually like to have the, the negation there. We can, we can take out this negation if we merely swap these two. OK. <laughs> Uh, so we can do that. Uh, what else? Um, oh, here, here's a fun one. Notice we're, we're testing while i is less than x. Well, what if x is zero? Well, it doesn't do anything, right? Why do we have the if outside of it? We, we don't really need that guard. So we can like, take this whole if statement away. Oh, did you, did you, did you notice that... Um, uh, we, we could do the, uh, the tab in because we uh, don't have the friends. If we'd uh, tab that with the friends around the conditional, it would only tab that, that one line. That's uh, an advantage of uh, not having the friends around the conditional. Okay, what else? What else? I don't know. I ran off my uh, crib screen here. Okay, uh, another thing that Perl 6 is trying to do is, is do more with parallelism. And one of the ways to do that is uh, with coroutines. And test, yeah, still works. Um, so since Perl 6 is supposed to do kind of both functional programming and object-oriented a little bit better, uh, one of the things we try to get rid of, if, you, if you're thinking like a functional programmer, you try to get rid of uh, intermediate variables. And you see something like um, that out, add out here. It's declared here and returned at the end, and we're pushing onto it in the middle. Well, you know, we can get rid of that in Perl 6 by using a construct called gather take. So let's get rid of the return. Now, if we go up here and add a gather in front of the while, um, then we can use a take within the scope of that, and that will uh, just take those values. So we can just gather up all the takes from whatever code that, that runs, and it, run, it runs asynchronously. So, and, and lazily, so uh, it'll just uh, uh, do the work when it needs to and not before. In this case, it, it's, uh, it's, it doesn't need to be lazy, but that's okay. Now we're declaring a routine up here. We've got a little problem uh, because uh, we're using the end of this uh, array here to record the previous value. And that array is going away, so let's say that we're going to compare it with the previous value, which we will set somehow. So let's go up here, and so we're going to, oops, not typo. Um, we're going to set the previous value, but if we do it this way, then we've shifted off, the pre shifted off the previous value. I mean, we could say take previous, but that's outside the gather, so it's not going to work. So actually, instead of that, we we'll just do something simple like, say, uh, set the previous value to negative infinity which happens to work both for strings and numbers, conveniently enough. So, uh, uh, 
to, you can constraint, you can compare strings to plus or minus infinity. Those are special values. Okay, now we see that it's not in fact sorting. So something is not right. Ah, we never set prev down here. So we want to say previous equals that, and it still won't work for an arcane reason. And it turns out that you need to pull out the zeroth element because the splice is returning a list. So we want to turn it into an item. And when we do that, it works. Okay, uh, what now? Uh, okay, let's, uh, you know, we can use the underscores, but uh, we can also use the, the, the minuses uh, just in, in the old names in Perl 6, so let's do that just to make it slightly more sexy, I mean sexy, sexy, yes. Uh, or lispy, anyway. Depends on what you think of lisp. Um, all right, now, uh, yeah, the other, next thing that's bothering me here is that we're doing everything from the right end of this array. Uh, we can swap the whole thing. It's a little more natural to do things left to right than right to left, and we're doing this merge from the, the tail end of the thing. We can, change the, we can change everything around here, so we compare the first elements of the, of the arrays instead of the last. What else do we have to do? Well, we change unshift to push, we, there too. And we have to change the pop to uh, shift and that one to shift. We're just doing the opposite, the same operation on the opposite end of the array. And that's a shift and that's a shift. So, yeah. And the splice, which is a very fancy way of pushing on the front, <laughs> we can just replace with a push. And that's, that looks a lot cleaner, doesn't it? Okay, what else? Um, we have to, we have to, this is subtle, we have to swap these, increase and decrease. And also we have to swap where the residue comes out. Since, since we're uh, uh, swapping the, uh, the order of the merges, the residue wants to go on the end instead of on the beginning. So that should work, yes. Uh, what else? Okay, now we'd like to do this gather take trick here too. We see a temporary variable. We'd like to get rid of it. Okay, let's delete it, put a gather there, uh, change this to a take, change these strings to a take, and take that. But that take is outside the gather. Oops, what are we gonna do? Well, you don't have to always put the gather directly on. You can just have a, uh, a gather block by itself. It's like a do block. Uh, you can leave, leave the, the brackets off of a do also. There's another tab using that. And now we can take the take and actually put it inside the gather, but after the while. And then it does the right thing. Same thing that the thing did before. Um, and I just noticed in passing that these should probably be is read write also since we're in fact shifting the array. The, uh, the current implementations don't actually check that currently. Yeah, that works. I'm not going to test it since we're low on time. Well, what else? Okay. Well, yeah. We'd like to get rid of the... Um, We'd like to get rid of this intermediary uh, strand array. Now, you, know, you, you can't get rid of this out here because we're modifying it each pass through the loop. So we can't just take it and then modify it after we've taken it. So, but we can get rid of this strand here. We can call strand directly. And you'll notice that it's, it's testing the return value of strand, but it's never going to return anything. If, if you pass in a null array, it's gonna return a null array. So, it already does that cleanly, so we can just test uh, add x in the while loop here. And that cleans it up a little. Okay. Um, now, another nice thing about not having parens is that we can refactor uh, flip, flip uh, uh, while loops. So we can just, uh, if we want to turn this into a statement modifier, we put this after, uh, change, get rid of that, and now we didn't have to add or subtract 
parens. Oh, we have to get rid of that too. So that should still work. Yeah. Okay. Now here's another thing. Uh, now we're getting really fancy. Uh, it, 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 in uh, Perl 6, you might want to have an operator here because you, you can have operators that work on two lists. So we might want to have an operator like this. Well, it's, that operator is not defined yet, but we'd like to have a merge operator. By default, it would go left to right, and it would even be lazy. But uh, we don't have that yet. So uh, let's just change this to infix m from merge. Okay, and uh, see how that works. It works. <laughs> so now we have a new operator. But you know, what's the use? Why would you actually want to have a new operator like that? Well, look at look at this use of the operator. Um, variable equals variable operator something. Does that ring a bell? That, that's an assignment operator, right? Well, th those are all hardwired into Perl 5, but in Perl 6, any operator, including a user-defined operator, can be used as a, an assignment operator. <laughs> so, et voila. Okay, uh, any, and uh, let's text, and it works in Rakuto also. Uh, anything else? We're just about done here, so you can go, you can go have your coffee break. Uh, just a little, little more stylistic cleanup here, and that is, uh, you, you notice that the, uh, there's an inconsistency here, here with the parens. Uh, we need the parens below, or the shift would eat up all the rest of the arguments. Um, so, um, but the way we usually write that in Perl 6 is to use the method the call anyway, and with the method call, we don't actually need those parens because by default, uh, method on, its only argument is the, the object itself. Uh, you can put parens if you want to add arguments. So we would tend to write that, and you'll notice it, it lines up better in parallel. We don't have to have the on again, off again parens. And one other one, the splice would probably uh, be written like this. Okay. And it still works. Okay, uh, and that's uh, more or less what the, uh, the current uh, Perl 6 Rosetta code entry is, and you can compare it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of this stuff, we've made some improvements uh, in, in the design, you know, that, you know uh, and uh, I, I don't know if you get the English to agree that American is, is an improved new language, but um, we, 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 we've made a few improvements in, in Perl 6, and some of them uh, are being borrowed back into Perl 5. That's great. We're borrowing some ideas uh, back from Perl 5. Uh, so, you know, we're getting this cross-cultural communication going, and that's, that's a really good thing. And uh, so... Um, I guess it's time for some cross-cultural communication over coffee. <laughs>